All right, so this is the big day. Yay! We are going to go over to Amazing Fantasy Comics, and we are going to interview the owner. So tell me, Cade, how do you feel? Both sides. I'm very nervous and I'm very excited. Yeah? So it's that little fine line right in the middle. I understand. And you have your questions ready? Yes. Yes. All right, let's go do it. Okay, guys, we are back and we are at Amazing Fantasy Comics. And this is Mr. Carey, the owner. Of you the call show. me Sean? So, Sean. Yeah. Uh, we have some questions for you. Go right ahead. About your shop. Yeah, right. Okay, so what inspired you to buy your first comic? Hmm. Well, my mom said I should start buying them for myself instead of her buying it because it was my favorite, was Spider-Man. We always bought comics as a family, so pretty much they would, every Thursday, just put a pile on the floor and I'd read them. But I got very interested in Spider-Man and learned to start reading at four. So by the time I was five, I was a very efficient reader. I was proficient. And I just continued with the love of comics, and so since Spider-Man was my favorite and I knew what day it was going to come out, I started putting my 20 cents on the counter for it. Right before they went up to 25 cents, which was kind of crippling for my little budget. So that's how much they were, was 20, 20 cents? 20 cents, yeah, that was, yeah, and I didn't realize they were cheaper than that when my parents were kids, and I had no idea that they still had all those old comics. Until I was seven, and, well, about eight almost, I think seven or eight, yeah. So uh, they're in the back of the closet, all these clothes out and then there's this box back there I'm like what's going on there so I look and there's these comics that cost 10 cents I'm like wow you guys had it made what what's going on here 12 so why did you let me read these why are these sitting in a closet what's going on dude you're not touching these took them and sold them used the money to put down for a 74 Mustang brand new holy so got about half, cow I got about half I think down for that because they had some very important old comics and wow. I had no idea old comics would be worth anything I just thought there was something you read and I didn't take care of any of the stuff and I was like light bulb eureka moment so from that ah. moment I just became a comic entrepreneur so by the time I was eight I was already buying at garage sales and buying extras of ones I liked and finding kids that might get into comics and so I'll talk them into doing it too wow That's very cool. cool okay so um, what was your favorite comic? Spider-Man by far Spider -Man? And for me it was like the only comic that really counted all the rest were fiction and Spider-Man was the real thing is Spider-Man still your favorite? Uh, yeah, I guess, as far as characters go, but I'm more into the artists and writers now. I like what somebody can do with an otherwise useless character, some might say. One of the hardest characters to write is Superman, and one of my favorite comic writers, Alan Moore, has only touched that character maybe five times because it's such a challenge, but his are the best Superman stories of all. So It's really, for me, it's more about the talent behind the creations now that I've grown up and gotten my own business that's involved with it. I've kind of seen behind the curtain now, and so I see what is all involved. And it's not about Spider-Man, it's about who does Spider-Man. Mm. Okay, that's an interesting perspective. Wow. Okay, next buddy. So does that mean Marvel is your favorite? Well, again, it's more about the talent, and I would say as a kid, Marvel was definitely a different company than they are now. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was run more like a mom and pop shop, and they cared about their fans. Uh, now it's just strictly business and you know they'll drop or take a property if it's worth billions and they could care less about the sentimental value for the most part so I can't really say as a company I have an affection for them but they are my number one supplier so as far as all publishers on a business end yes they're my favorite as a fan I don't have a favorite company I have creators and writers that I will check out but they could work for any company so as you approach your 30th anniversary um um, what would you say has kept you going? <sighs> the fact that it evolves every week. Every week we get a new shipment and they're always on this front row. And each week is informed by the previous weeks that were out before that. And everybody's trying to step their game up. Maybe take the lesson they learned from that previous week and put it to a new level. So for me it's really exciting to see something new every week based on what's come before. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, are you planning a 30th anniversary um, celebration? I would love any ideas, any suggestions on that. I'm trying, but that's one of my big stress points right now is I would love to do something with it, but it's not a party kind of hobby in my mind. So mm. you're dealing with an uh, isolationist hobby for the most part. But I would love to do something, and we are going to do at least something. I don't know what as of today, though. Mm. Okay. So, cool. Um, <laughs> so cool. It appears that you only sell comics. Is this on purpose? 
Yeah, well, we've done various things over the years. We uh, started out with non-sport cards, and that was really big in the 80s, and then that kind of went into comic cards, the Marvel Universe cards. That was, at one point was 67% of our business. <laughs> it was huge. And then Magic the Gathering came along, so mm. we evolved into that, and we used to have the first real big tournaments of any store in Colorado. And we did that from 95 all the way up until about four or five years ago. But that market changed drastically because of the greed of the publishers. They started making certain specific cards that were so rare, they made every other card common. And so with everybody chasing one or two cards, there wasn't a lot of money in holding on to the other ones, and there was enough competition to where we were making up for the butts in the chairs. Mm. It was just filling the place up and not necessarily creating more sales. So we did away with that, and that was one of the better moves we've ever done in the card games. It was good to get in it when we did, and it was great to get out of it when we did. Well, we noticed you don't have pops like or action or figures. Or right, and I've done all that over the years to some success or another, but it is very trendy, and you tend to have to be 100% committed to something like that to really do well with it. So when we get toys, we take them to our uh, Brass Armadillo uh, kiosk. It's an antique store up up west and towards Golden area. Oh. And so I've had that going for years and that's where my toys are currently. Or if we get anything exceptionally oh. non-comic, that'll go there. But yeah, I we're see. trying to be a purist comic store. So when you come here, you have lots of choices of comics and you don't have to dig through P.O.P. figures, pop figures, whatever they are. Uh -huh, sure. Or toys or any of the other Chinese manufactured junk that you're gonna be tired of in five years. Well, and we really noticed that, I mean, cause Mile High, which was, you know, of course the giant of you know, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, of, of Denver. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to take them there for their first experience. We brought them here oh, because, okay. well, I mean, we wanted it to be a real comic book experience. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, so was. yeah, no, we had a lot of fun, and your guys were super cool. Um, I'm very, so very proud of my employees. Like, they're amazing yeah, and kind. There's a passion, yes. and yeah, I'm sure you have seen. We've definitely started to discover that. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, why does the Amazing Fantasy comics have an extra A inside it? Because we can't copyright Amazing Fantasy. Because that's a Marvel title. That's what's introduced Spider-Man. The final issue of Amazing Fantasy is the first appearance of Spider-Man. And that's what I use. I sold my copy and the first 21 Spider-Man to get the money to do this. So this is all self-funded out of my own collection that I bought you know, at your age and younger. And wow! For years and so. Yeah, it was a very hard decision to pay $70 for that first Amazing Fantasy 15 uh, copy that I had. But it worked out pretty well. It ended up selling for $2,100. Wow. So, you know, things like that is how I did this. And so as respect to Amazing Fantasy and to have first in the phone book. And at the time, <laughs> there wasn't an internet, but I saw it coming. Uh -huh. I mean, we knew there was bulletin boards, and we knew that kind of thing was going to happen. So I had that in mind. So it is a unique search term now, the two A's. Wow, cool. Very nice. It's very good to have it show up first in the phone books. Yeah. Because people be like, Phone books were What's a thing. That? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. true. Now it's an internet phone book or a new very search. Very true. Concept, so. Very true. Yes. Uh huh. So, personally, I'm starting with the comic world in my family. So, what would you suggest we really start with first? Well, you sound like you were drawn to Infinity Gauntlet and the Marvel Universe, so you've got a wide open build, anything from there. If you like that enough and you want to see where it continues, mm -hmm. there's Infinity Crusade, Infinity War, or if you want just a different kind of Marvel big scope book, there's Civil War. So there's quite a few uh, behind you here on this wall, I'll ask if you could show it. Those are all books that reprint old comics, and so there's complete stories in all of those. Yeah. And any of the famous Marvel stories like Winter Soldier for Captain America or some of the early Carnage and Venom, you can have all those in one book. And so that's where I really suggest. And as far as what you're into, I mean, you've got everywhere to go. You've got the whole world ahead of you. There's Secret Wars is another one. Well, and we actually are picking up uh, the Batman Ninja Turtle okay. series because so we had the first one. So yeah, he and that's a fun concept that's only up the too, last so. 20 years or so, where you have the two companies crossing over to. Well, many companies crossing over to bring their characters together for a limited time. Right. And those aren't going to be available forever, so you kind of have to get those when you see them if you want them, because those licensing deals are very short term. Oh, really? Yeah, so that might not be in print next year. Interesting, really? Yeah, because it's two mm. companies, DC and Mirage, and there's only a limited time where they're going to combine their properties. Oh. And so it's just not something they keep open infinitely. I see. There's royalties that have to be split, there's all kinds of things that have to be done, so it's usually yeah. a very limited partnership when they do that. Got you. Now, a bunch of the guys asked me to ask you what's on your pull list this week. 
Ah, oh, this week. Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> right, Silver so Surfer Black would be the first one. Yeah, I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, are these the, all of them here? No, not all of them. Those are variant covers, which is a uh, cover from the main cover. Gotcha. So over here is the front row. This is the new releases Wednesday. And we open at 11, so there's going to be a lot more at 11 a.m. than there are right now. So sure. there's already a few sellouts. Sure. Yeah, Spider Man used to be one of my regulars, but I don't really even read it anymore. Like, oh, wow, oh, really? It's just Ouch. Uh, something that you know I'll check in with once in a while, but not a real big deal. Gotham so City Monsters up. sounds fun. Frankenstein putting together his little monster super league. Gotcha. Gotcha. And King Thor definitely is the top one today, so. Yeah. Not a real big list, but King Thor is a future Thor, long after he's done retired from all the superheroing. And right. That's when mm -hmm. it chronologically could be his last story. The oh, story with that. Really gotcha. That. Okay, very nice. So, yeah. very Those nice. would be what this week's would have. But there's always plenty others, and on this top row here are my recommendations for trade paperbacks and stuff that's been in print for years. So ah, that goes okay. all the way across. Usually separated by artist and writer, in this case Neil Gaiman, you're looking at Sandman, those are very famous outside of the comic industry. Oh, gotcha, okay. You don't have to wait on me here. We can help you whenever you want to take Oh, you're good, man. Okay, so all of these down here, are these like more expensive copies or something? Yeah, that's our premium case. It's gotten picked over today. It's a strange yeah. day to have you photograph it. We didn't have that full, but... We sold a couple out of there. Well, These that's are the good. more important issues. So, I mean, something that is real special has happened in these, and that's why people continue to want them more than a standard comic. I see yeah. that Secret Wars all the time. Yeah, that's the first uh, origin of the black costume that becomes Venom. Gotcha. But originally it was Spider Man's costume. Gotcha. I so, see a lot of slabs of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. definitely one of the most slabbed comics, and it's kind of a tricky one because when they're only worth about a hundred bucks raw it's kind of you're you're putting a large percentage of the value into slabbing it you're put you're basically rebuying the collection for 40 percent when you slab a book like that mm -hmm. so i recommend slabbing more for the 500 and up type value but if you love the book do it what is your thought on slabbing just me personally i think like I say i think it's great for 500 dollars and up you yeah. know the books that are really old if you're buying a ten thousand dollar book you're going to want it checked professionally for restore if anybody's added anything to it subtracted anything thing for it it's really a good thing to have now I'm considered a credible source for grading because I've been doing it for 34 years as far as my occupation goes ah. and longer you know before I was doing it for a living so it's not an official slab because you don't have the CGC name and it's not hermetically sealed yeah. but for insurance purposes we do appraisals and you can use us as a source so, last but not least, what does the future hold for Amazing Fantasy Comics? It's a good question. I think our website will pick up even more as we continue to put inventory on there. Uh, I would like it to be more of an interactive website so that you sitting at home at 4 in the morning can order up on our order form. and. If you wake up in the morning, change your mind. As long as it hasn't committed, you can go in there and change that. So I see our website being a target uh, for when you are wondering when something's coming up and you see that it's going to be available, you can order it. So that's what I'm hoping to get something by this time next year, have that more smooth. And you would want that to be nationwide, I think. It right? is. I mean, yeah. we're, it's AmazingFantasyComics.com is already up and running. We ah. do have some inventory up there, and we do have... Uh, it's being mostly used for people finding us to sell us collections so far, or at least offer us collections, so that's oh. been a bonus. Okay. The sales haven't been up to what I would hope, you know, at this point, then I have high hope, so... Well, we will definitely put all of your contact information yeah. in the link below. Okay. thank you. Um, and that way people will know what your website is and who you are and how to find you Great. so well we would like to thank you yeah, so, so much, much. Yeah, yes you. for yeah. your time yeah, sure. and sharing your you know history with us yeah. it was really amazing we appreciate it so thank you thank you, thank you. okay burning block okay. out okay